This expedition did not turn out as I had expected. We embarked on the idea of doing something we thought had never been done before. Something we could feel proud of. After more than 30 years of skiing mountains all over the world, I never really looked seriously into what my home, Sweden, has to offer. This journey got me new perspectives, but not just about mountains, but more about myself. When we arrived tonight in Kikyok, for Erin and me, it will be like 38 hours of driving from La Grave. <laughs> A pretty long drive across all Europe. From... Do you want anything? <laughs> I'm good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> we have a very thirsty crew. <laughs> but what's that? So what happens is in, in Easter, all the families get together and you get all the uh, chickens on the farm. Yeah. And then you squeeze them really hard. <laughs> and, then, and then this comes out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I'll try. Chicken, chicken juice. Chicken, chicken juice. Oh, we don't have any more, right? Yeah, I have some. I don't have a lot, but. No. And I put it in the I have some. I have some. I have some. In April 1938, two men named Colin Wyatt and Bobby Allen Tuska set out on a journey where they climbed and skied some of the iconic mountains in Swedish Lapland. Ahead of their time, ski mountaineering was a somewhat unknown culture in Sweden. In Wyatt's book, The Call of the Mountains, he shared some of his experiences from this pioneering quest, traversing, climbing and skiing, which came to be a dear inspiration for me, and will to explore more of the northern peaks of Sweden. Erin is my friend from Washington State. We met on an avalanche course in Chamonix back in 2014, where she was one of my instructors. She is a UIA GM mountain guide, as well as her partner Benjamin, who is also a professional climber with several expeditions under his belt. Reina is my partner and husband since five years back. We met on the Freeride World Tour, and somehow he managed to make me move to this home village of Orta, Sweden. It feels good to have him on board, even though I know this will be his first real expedition. Uh, like adjust like group gear and weight to make sure Essentially, what Benjamin and I are hoping for the sleds is that nobody's carrying more than their body weight. Yeah. That's yeah. number one, especially just because that second day, one with the most heavy. Because we're going to actually get lighter pretty quick with all the food. How are you feeling, Jackie? 
Ask me in an hour. <laughs> Copy that. <laughs> we gotta get all that into that. And watch out for the snowmobiles. <laughs> oh, fun. And some poop. Yeah, so we started off a bit heavy, maybe like 10, 15 kilos. Oh, like 20 kilos more than we wanted. So yesterday we had to like go through, cut as much as we possibly could. So right now what we're looking at is 60 for like Ben and Reyna, uh, plus their skis. Aaron and I are around four, or no, 50 kilos each plus skis. And then uh, Martin, you got, I don't know, 46 kilos. So nobody got away with a light sled. Um, but we'll eat a bunch of food soon and start dropping a little weight. And yeah, it'll be all right. <laughs> The highest peaks in Sweden are slightly 2,000 meters above sea level, all located above the Arctic Circle. Six of them are in the National Park of Sarik, which is considered to be the last wilderness of Europe, with almost 100 glaciers and wild river deltas in long, narrow, winding valleys. There is one in the National Park of Stora Hufelet, which due to its character, is the biggest ski run in Sweden. And five in the Kebnekaise area, where the highest peak is located. Our goal is to climb and ski all these 12 2,000 meter peaks in one go doing roughly a 400 kilometer traverse by our own power. Our first goal will be to summit two peaks in the Port de Massif, about two days trek from Kikyok. Yeah, so we first see our first peaks of Sorek National Park. We've been in the park for a few k's now, but open up and it's pretty amazing. We're starting. Okay. Oh. It doesn't have to be right that second, but this is camp. As the forecast came in, it showed deteriorating weather, which narrowed down our options on when to summit our first peaks. We also had unusually high avalanche risks to consider. Sarek is a demanding area. The geology together with the location means that Sarik often attracts harsh weather. And the weather forecasts uh, are not always reliable due to less measuring points than, for example, compared to the Alps. Instead to go further west and climb the ridge, We'll take like the, the first ridge because there is no snow. It's slightly over 30 degrees, but like no chance to have an avalanche over there. And for the way back, we will ski the glacier to the east, but we don't have to make like the big tour. There is a pass that is slightly less than 30 degrees. So kind of a shortcut. And after it will be a long, long, long flat to our camp. It's like around like 40 kilometers for 2,000 meters elevation gain. Pretty long day, I think. Yeah, so we've seen the peaks, we have really far to go. To really step on it. And I'm running into some pretty water so shortage here. Here you go, Rena. That's okay. I'm not gonna take your water. Yes, you are. I can, I can melt. Some. We're, we're yeah. a team. Just, just a sec. No, no. See? I really, That's awesome. I'm, thank you. I'm doing so good. So. Okay, thank you. I still have Hey, how's our filmer? So easy. 
so easy. That's the uh, easiest ski touring session I ever done. Hundred <laughs> percent. So type two fun then? It will be a lot of type two fun, <laughs> for sure. The day it, we're not even halfway there yet. <laughs> so I'm stoked, but I'm ready to go to the next. Just finishing the warm up. What's yeah. next? <laughs> No conditions this year in Kebnekais, uh, Sarek, northern Scandinavia area was uh, tough. It was very cold uh, start, low with precip and a lot of cold, and we got some um, bad layers way down with some uh, sugary snow facets and uh, uh, death pores. And they are staying there for the rest of the season, which means when the snow came in February, with a lot of wind, and there were really tough conditions to, to figure out if the avalanche would come and when they should come. And if they come, they go big. The excitement of good snow and the fact that we successfully summited the first peaks was soon to be forgotten, as I had failed to eat and drink sufficiently throughout the day. And although I still had some food and water left, I was struggling to get anything down, and there was still a long way to go. Good <laughs> I couldn't see shit and I took the compression like <laughs> So that's hitting the mark of being out for 12 hours And we're not back to camp yet, we have quite a bit to go I'm struggling, I've never struggled this bad. But <laughs> thankfully I have Aaron with me, so I have a personal rope tow. But even with a rope tow, it's... <laughs> I have no one but myself to blame for underestimating the gravity of this day. And this is just the start. Had we bitten off more than we could chew? I made a huge miscalculation that could have ended up in a pretty severe situation. I learned a big lesson that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Fee farm, as we say in Swedish. That was a long day. Yeah, I'll find out. Nothing in Sarek has been done to make it easy to be a human. 
You need to adapt to the conditions of nature completely. You're on your own. Being the weakest link at times is not what I'm used to. It felt as if the success of the entire expedition fell on my shoulders. and we're really in the heart of Sark National Park now. You know, whoever said Sweden's mountains are small, they just need to come into here. This place is pretty amazing. The, the um, formation of, of the mountains was a long time ago. At that point it was a really high mountain range and then it was gradually uh, were eroded down to a rather low level and so it was a hilly landscape. When the Atlantic started to open up, the, 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 you had an uplift of, of the land but with about 1.5 kilometers. So suddenly from being a, a low hilly landscape you got an uplift and, and the erosion began again. So what we see today is the this second phase of erosion. So this is not the original uh, folding. Um, you can kind of feel in the air, it's, it's really getting cold and tomorrow's, tonight and tomorrow's forecasting to get down to minus 18 with a storm rolling in. And the snow conditions have gotten a little slower moving before we had the nice frozen lake, but now we got fresh snow. Guys, you were already cold, some of you, this night. Fine. Yeah, but less like more tired and uh, without like yeah. the time to set up the camp properly. Mm. So maybe trying to rush a tiny bit. Okay. A tiny bit. Uh oh. Right. Um, a little disappointed with myself because Ben just had to take my sled. Not because I was overly tired, but I wasn't moving fast enough. <laughs> and it's getting really cold tonight, so it was a bit of a safety thing. But it always feels like a bit of a bummer when you can't pull your own weight. Like literally, my own weight. <laughs> yeah. Ah! 
pretty one. So cool. I think it might be the best option for heading up to these next four summits. Um, so one option could be like to follow the west ridge of the main summit of Sarex Tot Open and hoping for really shallow snow, maybe boot packing with crampons over here. Okay. So after the west ridge, when we will swim it start open, we will have like to walk on the ridges, and we don't have like a lot of information about them, so not sure we will be able to keep our skis. So it will be boot packing with crampons. So we're at the next crux, which was even bigger than the previous one. And we're supposed to go up that ridge to the top and then back and then climb up here. But yeah, it's looking a little interesting trying to find bells and stuff that Benj and I are looking into. I've never felt more like a tourist in my life. Okay, I'll give you a second. The deal is uh, we go down and we have to come back up. Okay. And it doesn't look like it's possible yeah. for us to, the whole group to get back up. So they're looking for alternative options. Mm -hmm. Here comes Jackie down our first little rappel here off the mushroom. Just staying safe uh, from our avalanche conditions is gonna make our alpine conditions more interesting. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's on the other Okay. Yeah, I know, right? There was a moment of joy when we reached Nor Toppen, happily unaware that there still was a big doubt on how we were going to get the whole team back to Store Toppen again. Make sure you're not cold. I still have an extra down jacket in my because it's like it could take some time on this one. And the temperature was dropping. Still on the ridge. And now the weather is moving in real fast here. Gotta get this traverse done. Je ne me faire défoncer. Même les yeux. Ah putain. C'est du 2 avec des spin rives d'enculé. Bon, bah le reste du groupe va falloir me euh, faire être fort, les gars. Aaron was the last person below the crux, waiting there for more than an hour. When finally her turn, the rope got tangled. You you rub, and I pull everything. I give it to Ryan and he will pull everything. You rub to like.
there. Yeah. Ah, just have some screaming barfies, I'm okay. Oh. Oh. Hey, it's, it's free ice cream here. Yeah. <laughs> Good country. Yeah. I can't but respect the forces we are constantly facing. This avalanche cycle is nasty and it's sad, but it's not worth the risk. I've been lucky, but Reina has had some serious encounters before. And in the team, we've all had friends who have been less fortunate. I miss my skis and I feel more like a rookie out of my comfort zone. I really hope we can find some safe and good skiing soon. way over to the peak decided to leave the skis on our backs so we're a little bit faster with cramp on because we need cramp on there so we don't have to take them on and off all the time Yeah, I mean, we're not done yet, <laughs> but, yeah. But. Uh, but compared to the other day, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's another world. <laughs> from Sitopin was a blast. Finally, we were getting some good turns. I think this is what the whole group needed at this point. Do you get a good intel, Rene? I got I got a little bit of intel. Yeah. They showed how they've been walking and how everything looks up there, and it's supposedly it's pretty easy and straightforward. Then we don't know what their AVI skills are and how much risks they take, but no, the there's, the there's a lot guide, of flats out there. The other there. guide had said, had said about the same, like... Alright, Smartin, we're gonna be fast and light now. <laughs> <laughs> Taking uh, inspiration from Benj. 
How many grams? Uh, One or two? Being able to spend a night in a cabin after nearly two weeks in a cold Sodic was mostly welcome. At least for most of us. So yeah, we are not so bad here. It's warm and cozy. But yeah, when we get here yesterday, like I had like these weird feelings of, I don't know, like, um, that was like ruining like the trip. Like um, we were outside like for 10 days and we are supposed to keep going like for 16, maybe something like that. And yeah, I had like this super weird feeling that I wanted to, to be outside. Even if this night was super windy, today it's warm and wet and it's almost raining. But yeah, like I wanted to be outside, I think. Skiing from the peak of Stortoppen at Akka all the way down to Lake Akkayare is a run of almost 1,600 vertical meters. This is the biggest run you can find in Sweden and usually a fairly straightforward ski tour to the summit. Starting out as a beautiful day, there soon arose a discussion between Aaron and Benj, unable to agree on which way to take to the summit. And what's going on over there? Other well, discussions. Not fully sure. Yeah. Closing in on the summit, we all put our crampons on, even though Raina didn't seem to agree with that decision. It's hard to argue with a UGM guide too. You shouldn't because they, they know their stuff. But I grew up in this environment. I climbed this cauliflower stuff my whole life. Never had crampons on. I mean, there's definitely places where you're gonna have them on. I've been to places at home where you need crampons, but this would not be one of them. Lagsvis trillar man åt höger. Det känns bra. Mycket bättre. The feeling on the summit seemed to be mixed. The Arctic 12 for Irene and me was like our worst time in our relationship. We are together since five years now. And uh, yeah, that was the worst time for our couple because um, and we have basically no explanation. We talked about it like a lot, about like this Aka day where like I thought she was taking a lot of risk, uh, unnecessary risk. The Aka day was definitely our low point of the trip for us and our communication. Um, again, on any of these trips with fatigue and all the stresses we were going through, we're also human and don't always communicate perfectly. <laughs> and leading up to the Aka day, there had definitely been rising frustrations for Benj within the whole trip and the team. and. He really felt that we needed to be perfect as mountain guides. It's, uh, I don't know, we just saw some guys ski down and uh, it looks really bad. So that part's not super inspiring, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely amazing up here. So, so yeah, it's so good.
I don't, I don't know what they thought they were signing up for. I guess that's, that's the hard part. Like, we're not trying to set a speed record. I, I don't know why there's always this stress to push forward so fast all the time. We have stuff that we have to do. We have a camera guy with a bunch of stuff on his back. Um, we have to adapt to his pace. We have to make it so that he can film stuff. I, I just, it's too bad that they were feeling that way, but they signed up to be in a movie. So you are like sprinters, guys. You're not like endurance athletes. And like, that's not working like for me. Okay, we'll slow down. No, it's not a question of slow down. Uh, maybe you can, you can explain. More especially, guys, it's... Uh, so again, like, I do a lot of endurance stuff. And it's being able to keep a consistent pace. There's a lot less tiring at the end of the day. With them to Keb, it's normally two days. With clients, it's three days. For us, it's four days. And yeah, like, the pass is over there. I thought we were going to stay on the water, that's why I went, right? Yeah, like stay on the water and we finish in the bushes over there. Sometimes it's getting a little bit frustrating because uh, you won't say like we need to stick together as a team, but yeah, we're not uh, having the same base that you guys are having. So like earlier, when I would try to take off a little bit earlier, so I wouldn't be ending up so far behind, because we're not staying together as a team even when you guys are in the front. I'm falling behind, and so I was trying to like adapt that way, but that wasn't okay. And now, I mean, we had to do some filming because it's a nice day, we're finally out of the park, so it was possible to do some extra stuff because we are here to make a movie. And We are here for a movie, I understand that. I'm like totally in. But the thing is like, yeah, we have like to um, like maximize like the breaks, the it's like yeah, we make a stop, we wait for Martin, we walk like 15 minutes more and another break. And after you run in front of us and after you ride be like a lot behind. We were only behind now because we went to No, but it's not like I'm not head. talking about today. I'm talking like since Kikyok. Okay. But like since, since Kikyok we are trying to give you like some kind and gentle advices based on our on our experience and like that doesn't work and yeah like we are every day for sure with the forecast with the filming with the summits we are like replanning things but we are also replanning things because like we are like fucking slow and it's just decreased every day and every day and every day I'm, I'm like, I don't really understand, like, we're trying, like, on the days... Because, between... like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a game of patience and it's a game of, like, it's a game of keeping, like, the same speed, having, like, breaks every hour or every, uh, an hour and like a half. Like, now when it's optimal flight conditions and it's mega easy to move, would you still do the slower pace? No, we were yourself? moving, like, compared to this morning, we are moving faster, but we are not running at six. For sure because after there is like a climb we don't know the, the next conditions and basically we keep energy we save energy a, a good analogy for it is for our endurance like when we're trying to set a pace trying to keep like an idle think about like the engine of a car i mean we understand sorry i don't mean to cut you off but we understand like the pacing and everything it just it hasn't always been like that like it's when sometimes you guys are setting sometimes it's really fucking fast or sometimes it's been slow when you're trying to make up because, yeah, I can't go as fast as you guys and hold that pace at the same time and I'm sorry and maybe I shouldn't be here, but that's just the reality. Like, nothing ever seems like it's good enough and it's really fucking frustrating. Um, I, like, I'm sorry that I went there instead of there and if we were to, like, nitpick any time, like, that you guys were to do something wrong, which, yeah, maybe it doesn't happen as often, but it does, like, it would suck. And that's what it feels like, that we are like constantly shit and under attack sometimes. And it gets like, yeah, it's not a vacation, that's for sure. 
Yeah, I gotta agree with Jack here. That's yeah. what it's been, and it's been a couple of not ideal navigation before, and we're not nitpicking on that. I apologize if if there have been some hurt feelings. Like Benj and I have been really doing everything we can to make this trip a success. Just so you guys all know, we have been working our asses off, oh, yeah. and we guiding and planning and. Every single summit, the stress we have had to try and succeed has been overwhelming. Every little nitpick, it's not to put anybody down, it's to be the most efficient so that we can have success. I mean, I can go, I can slow down, but it's just like, we're trying to explain it's really fucking easy without the skins on, but I mean... Yeah, but you're talking about like a fucking hour, like we are talking about like 30 days, that's the thing. Like, I'm sorry I get pissed, but like, I don't it's, it's, yeah, here you can run, like, for, but it's the first time in 15 days that, like, the snow conditions are perfect and we can, like, move without skins. So, that, so why don't we take advantage of that? I don't, that's because, like, we're ending, like, in between a waterfall and bushes instead to be on the right way. So is, where, it, where, not, is it a question of are we taking our skins park? off for navigation? Like there, is, like there is like a valley over there, like slight to the rocks, and that's just like that easy. Ah, oh, you know, it's, it's bound to happen. If you're traveling in a group, it's hard, stressful or whatever. Tension's gonna come up eventually. It's weird that it happens on a good day when everything is perfect like this. That's the only thing that got me. Uh, so it's been a little bit their way or no way. Like this was the first time Jack and I went up front, took a little initiative and immediately a bam. No, wrong, 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 wrong. It's unavoidable for the team to, you know, hit some friction, to hit some conflict. That's natural, that's a given to me. But then you have to have someone that's kind of the glue within the family who's gonna focus on conflict resolution and keeping everyone sticking together. And yeah, we just end up being in the lead, especially because there is so much terrain to cover. And that's what we do, like we're, like yeah, for sure we're not going to make every perfect terrain decision, but we want to get the team to the end goal, you know? Like, I know Ben has his, his, his who he is and has his comments and stuff, but it's like, it's kind of like after a while it kind of wears on you and you feel like, always like, like for energy, I don't know, yeah. kind of like for moral, for moral, that was better just to yeah. shit or like yeah. not yeah. able to but, um, keep up and yeah. like, like I'm trying not to, we've got to plan. Yeah. trying to like make up from that's like I know I fucked up on the second yeah, day and like I know like my weaknesses I don't have the same endurance and I'm like trying to find ways to deal with it and trying to just like do what I can. But Jackie, you're incredible. You're amazing. You belong here. Like this is this is all your dreamed up trip. Like don't feel. Um, I really don't want you to feel otherwise. But like you know, with clients, like I'm constant. I just never experienced that much tension all the time. Um, and I've been on other expeditions before. And some with people that I, you know, met for the first time there. And uh, this was just kind of on a whole new level for me. I think a, the big mistake of this whole expedition is the lack of communication between everybody. I hope the group dynamics will be better. We still have a ways to go and more challenges to come. It leads me to think about Wyatt. Did he and Bobby ever have any arguments? If so, how did they deal with it? However, I'm not here to be comfortable, but in the endeavor to evolve and to share the experience with you. Makes me feel a little bit better to hear that Benj is finally tired. <laughs> We're not tired, but that it was a workout for him. <laughs> <laughs> it only took 230 something kilometers, but we found a workout for Benj. <laughs>
The south peak of Kebnekaise has, until recent years, been the highest point of Sweden. Since it's crowned by a glacier, warmer weather has caused it to shrink. And depending on how much snow there is, the highest point shifts from time to time to the North Peak. Okay, so uh, north summit of Kevnekaise. Yeah. yeah, we are on the north summit. And same thing as the other one, I've got 35 satellites. I'm standing here since six minutes. And my GPS is telling me that this one is three meters lower than the south summit. So I guess it's the opposite of the last measure. But it's a measure with a smartphone compared to a real scientist, so, <laughs> like, I don't want any responsibility about that. <laughs> <laughs> well stoked on the achievement of checking off two more peaks, the descent was no way near as good as we had hoped for. In 2016, the Swedish Land Survey did a laser scanning in the Lapland mountain region. This was part of a big project in order to establish a national elevation model. It showed that one peak that was previously measured to 1,997 meters was actually 2,004 meters. Due to this, the journey becomes a bit more complicated. spend the weekend trying to get these two peaks. First, we have to summit Kaskashokke and Kaskapakta in the Tarfula Valley. To bring the heavy sleds from here over the massive towards Silmatchokke would not be an option. Therefore, the best way we could find was to go back to Kebnekaise mountain station, then to Kuxlinen, and from there, head north. Yeah, so we repacked everything down in Keb Station so that our sleds are half the weight or a third even. So now we can alternate a little bit and help each other push for these few days up in Tarfala where we have... We dumped, dumped a bunch of food and stuff that we don't need now. So it's actually much more enjoyable to pull the sleds right now. But the terrain is crazy. So much avalanche debris. In order to make it within our time frame and food supply, we rationed four days to stay in the Tarfula Valley. Here, we have our biggest concern and the most technical peak of the whole trip. Climbing Kaskaspakt is a, it's a tricky mountain. It's the only mountain in Sweden that you have to climb to get up to. 
Uh, and also when you start climbing, you have passed some uh, avalanche areas that you also have to do safely. Um, and you can do, go from different ways. You can go the ridge from the west or you can go more from uh, Kaska, Sashoka and Liljetoppen. But mo both ways are climbing. If you go in the summer, you know it will be rock to climb there. It's more, more predictable. But in the winter, you don't know what kind of snow quality that is expected. So it's a, it's a challenge to go up there in the winter. Uh, from here it looks, it looks like harder than uh, what we did in between Stuhl and North Open and Sarek. More exposed for sure too. And we have like less information than, uh, than Sarek, so yeah. Like the issue with the west face, it, if we cannot ski it, like we are kind of fucked because heading on the east ridge on site without like with just what we see from here i don't feel like super comfortable with that so yeah we'll have to chat at the camp and make a decision but that won't be easy for sure it felt like casca pacta would determine our success in reaching the summit of all 12 peaks. So by elimination, like the only option is to redo uh, Casca Choco to the, that we did today. <laughs> Head down on Lilitopen. We can maybe keep the skis over Lilitopen and we leave them there. Yeah. Because like we, we will be on, on our limit technical limits so for me I don't want you guys to have like skis on the backpack especially because it will be down climbing, rappel, traverse and for us short roping too it just makes everything simpler for like and you'll be lighter travel. you'll be lighter on us if yeah, we short rope you sure we'll leave the skis for that yeah. so yeah like it's shitty again but like the only option I see it's that The safest way up seemed to be following the ridge from the northeast side. Easier than what I thought, but uh, definitely super exposed. We are here and the way down I left like many like cordelettes and things, so we'll be able like to, to belay ourselves on it, so pretty good. And I go see the next part. Your backpack is open. Huh? Uh, yeah. feeling guys good still not there yet but uh so far so good once we're at the summit we're halfway <laughs> yeah. still gonna go back through all of that oh should i just then, basically don't follow our track yeah. but make like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit left Ew. and the summit is here so Oh, wow, it's 11. 11. I don't have enough fingers anymore. Yay! <laughs> Crazy. Thank you. Can I have hey, a feeling, guys? If you film over there, like there is like a huge avalanche that came like, I don't know, some days or weeks ago. And it's basically the same aspect as the east face. That's the game, that's the game of the mountains. But um, I'm pretty psyched that we did it because, again, it's the hardest one. 
Today's society is so safe and everything that are maybe a bit unsafe, we try to forbid it with rules. So back in the days, just by going to work as a carpenter or a roof uh, fixer, well, you could cry and you had some adventure work in there, but today everything is so safe. And I think personally that a lot of us, maybe not all people, need this adventure in our life to be um, happy and uh, have a meaningful way of living. When skiing down, it almost felt that we were done. I had hoped for more skiing and time to enjoy all the mountains. The tension felt constant, and that was our biggest challenge. It's, it's a tough feeling, um, trying to stay focused and doing your best while um, communication and the dynamic is, is off. It's really hard to communicate with people that don't respect you because it feels like they're not listening or hearing you out. And I think that was what was really hard. And I've also been on other expeditions and this was, this had, this was the worst human dynamics I've ever had to deal with. Uh, I'm in the autistic spectrum, kind of. Um, I'm really intelligent I can like uh, I can think like super fast so I've got some skills on one side and the other side I've got like a big lack of like social skills I cannot like um, it's super hard to, for me to tell like if somebody is uh, like oh if he's smiling maybe he's happy but I will like question it in my head like yeah he's happy he's smiling maybe he's happy yeah I think he's happy this expedition was the most fatiguing I've ever been mentally. You know, to be honest, it was kind of in that moment of, I had weeks of processing the trip. I'm sad to hear that Aaron felt like it was so draining. The only thing I can say is that she took the group's, the whole group's safety on her shoulders too much. She was not there that so she had to keep us safe. Uh, we're all there to keep each other safe and uh, no one expected that her or Ben should be the sole people to, to maintain that selfie. I think they put that strain on themselves by not being able to let stuff go or put any trust in others. Despite all that, I never longed to go home. And still, if asked, I would do this again in a heartbeat. Okay, so uh, the start is uh, quite bony. So just as, oh my God! Like Wyatt was in the search of the freedom to explore, oh my God. I feel I have explored so much more than just the highest peaks of Sweden. All right, Jackie. The experience we take with us, the fears we faced, and all new things we got to learn about ourselves, that is the reward I cherish the most.
seen from the point of view that the group was not harmonic and struggled to get along. What they accomplished in the end is almost heroic. Even though some things went bad, it's said that real adventures start when things go wrong. And after all, despite the challenges we faced, we still stuck together and finished as a team. We did it! Good job! Yay. Good job! <laughs> Good job. Good job. I'd say the extreme highs for me, there were really two that stick out. Uh, one was skiing down Sarek, Sidtapen. And then the second one that really sticks out to me was a day we were leaving a camp. Super stormy and you could barely see in front of you, we were definitely into the headwind, like we were for so much of the trip. Uh, and all of a sudden, a family of reindeer was in the mist and the clouds and the wind and just looked over at us a bit. What are you guys doing here in our home? And it was pretty special, just all quiet, alone, running into that family of reindeer. North Peak of Kev looking to the south, that was like a really, wow, this is really cool. I've been up here before, but this time I walked here. This is cooler. Drinking a pint of IPA in uh, Kiruna. Oh, <laughs> this is a hard expedition. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I, oh, that's so sad. I, I don't think I ever really had that moment where I was just beyond excited. Or if I did, it was so short-lived because something else happened or the tension in the group or whatever it was hard for me to forget that I, I never fully had a chance to kind of escape and, and enjoy the experience. Um, which is a huge disappointment for me. I'm sad to hear that Jackie couldn't take out a high point. I knew she was stressed the whole way. Like the whole mission, she felt stressed and sometimes not happy. I think it has a lot to do with what you have invested in the project. For me it was easy. I sort of just slid into this project. I didn't put much on the table other than that I wanted to be there and, and support Jackie, which is uh, not always what I do to the best of my abilities. Maybe Jackie like forgot about the, the pizza and the beer on the way back, I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know if we can consider that still in the expedition. We were done. And when we were done, it's, it, that was the happiest moment of the trip. Is that your king? No, 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 no. no. my Bergman. He uh, yeah. gets a uh, big director. First glacier over there. Oh, nice little sprint there. Yeah. <laughs> Made up a little time.